Hey, welcome once again to The Journey Church. I'm Carrick Thomas, lead pastor here at The Journey New York City, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Those of you who call The Journey New York City your home, those of you also who call The Journey Boca Raton your home. You know, The Journey is one church that meets in multiple locations, so I always love the Sundays when we have the opportunity uh, to, to be at church online together. It's always really special, so I, I want to thank Pastor Jason for allowing me uh, to drop in in Journey of Boca Raton. So whether you're joining us in New York or from South Florida or wherever around the world you're joining us from today, you made a great decision to be here because today we continue a, a, a new series here at The Journey and it's called Pray Like This. And during this series, we're going deeper with God by looking at Jesus's most famous prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And so if you haven't yet, take a moment, click that button beside the live stream player. Go ahead and download your message notes so you can take some notes along the way today. Now, as we begin, I want to ask you this question. When was the last time you had to depend on someone else to come through for you? When was the last time you had to depend on someone else to meet a need in your life? I mean, it could have been something simple like moving a couch. That's more than just a one-person job, so you need someone else to come through for you. It could have been something a little more stressful because maybe you had an, a, an early morning meeting and you had to depend on the subway to get there on time, to get you to your meeting on time. Or it could have been something more important. Like you were depending on your biggest client to sign the contract to get your company through a financially a really difficult time. The truth is there, there are times in all of our lives when we have to depend on others to come through for us. You know, a, a few months ago, I took my two boys to LaGuardia Airport uh, to drop them off. So they were going to go fly and, and spend time with their grandparents. And uh, because they're under 16, it's a little complicated, but I was on top of it. I called ahead. I knew exactly what we had to do. I got to the airport over two and a half hours early. And when I got to the airport, I found out what I had been told on the phone was completely wrong. And so we had to stand in this really long line. And we got to the front. We got everything worked out. They printed out the tickets. We had the tickets. It was still over an hour to the flight with one problem. The, the lady behind the counter said they can't go through security until uh, the people at the gate give us permission. And the people at the gate weren't picking up the phone. And now it was getting closer to an hour. She said if it gets closer to an hour, they can't get on the plane. And so I'm like, okay, look, we, we can figure this out. Can, can I just take my kids through security? I'll take them to the gate and we'll work it out there. No, sir, you can't do that. Well, can, can I, you don't have a ticket. Well, can I buy a ticket and go through and drop them, uh, drop them off? She goes, no, you can't buy a ticket because you're not going to get on the plane. And I'm like, well, can you carry them through security? She said, no, I won't do that. I'm like, can you send somebody back there and tell them to pick up the phone? And she says, no, we won't do that. And now I'm getting frustrated. And, I, and I'm like, well, this wasn't my fault. You know, uh, you guys messed it up. So what are, you, what are you going to do? And she told me, no, actually, it's your fault. If you had showed up three hours early, it would be our fault. But you only showed up two and a half hours early. So the only thing you can do now is buy new tickets. They're a lot more expensive for tomorrow morning. Leave the airport and then bring them back tomorrow. Let me just tell you, at that moment, I came this close to no longer being a pastor. I was frustrated. I mean, the truth is, given the choice, we would all rather not have to depend on others to come through for us. We'd rather be able to just handle it ourselves, especially if they're not going to be helpful. Here in New York City and in South Florida, we're independent people. We manage our own lives. We handle our own problems. You know, I don't need your help. And sometimes it's something we're taught from the time we're born. Be independent. Be your own man. Be your own woman. And that's how we like, like it because the truth is it's stressful to not be in control. It's stressful to have to depend on someone else to meet a need in your life. But as we continue to the second part of the Lord's Prayer today, we're going to look at life through a different lens. Not the modern lens of independence, but through the biblical, spiritual lens of absolute dependence. Remember, our goal in this series is to memorize the Lord's Prayer. And uh, then you heard me last week talk about the pray like the hashtag pray like this challenge where we're challenging you uh, to film yourself reciting the Lord's Prayer or film your family or film your growth group reciting the Lord's pr Prayer and then post it on social media so more people get to see the Lord's Prayer. I hope you'll participate. But I want to begin today 
by reading the Lord's Prayer. It's our memory verse every week during this series. I want to begin by reading it out loud together. Those of you in New York, in South Florida, wherever you're joining us for at Church Online, let's read it together with a lot of enthusiasm, beginning with our Father. Are you ready? Go. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, last week, we looked at the first part of the Lord's Prayer. And we talked about the prayer of priority. The prayer that reorients our life so that God is always in first place. And that's the part of the prayer that says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's that prayer, the prayer of priority, that prepares us to pray the rest of the Lord's Prayer. Including the part we're looking at today. The prayer of provision. This is the line that we're looking at today. A simple line. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, in a day when for most of us, our refrigerators are full and we often just throw out tons of extra food that we, that we don't eat, why would we need to pray for more daily bread? Especially those of you who are living gluten-free lifestyles. You know, the key issue Jesus raises here is not specifically about bread. And it's not about just where you're going to find your next meal. It's much bigger than that. These seven words are about trust. They're about complete dependence on God. Specifically, who are you going to depend on to meet your needs? Who are you going to depend on to meet your needs? And here's what I know. This is hard for most of us because, like I said, we'd much rather depend on ourselves. We want to be in control of everything. And so what happens is you stress yourself out. And you work hard so that you can be in control, so you can do it all yourself. And what you don't realize is that God is your provider. And by trying to do God's job, you you end up trying to be God. But here's the truth. You're not God. You're not big enough. You're not strong enough. You're not wise enough to do God's job. You can't do it all. You can't control it all. But guess what? We try anyway, don't we? And that's when life feels overwhelming. That's when life feels out of control. That's when life feels anxiety-ridden. You know, maybe that's where you're living right now. Anxious and afraid that you're not going to get it all done. Anxious and afraid that you won't have everything that you need. You know, there's an anxiety epidemic going on right now in the United States. One out of five Americans, over 40 million people, are suffering from some kind of anxiety disorder right now. One out of five. The number of people reporting anxiety has more than doubled in just the last 10 years. And guess what? It's risen the most among young people. However, a recent study on the effect of prayer, you know, what what effect does prayer have on anxiety? It shows that those who talk to God about their needs in prayer exhibit far less anxiety and are far more optimistic about the future than those who don't pray about their needs. Get this. Those who pray are less anxious. They worry far less. My question for you today is, how do you want to live your life? Under the stress and pressure because everything is up to you, because you've got to control everything? Or with greater joy and greater peace because you're trusting in God to meet all of your needs? Today, I want to show you how to talk to God about your needs in a way that allows you to lay down your anxiety and experience the miracle of God's provision. How to pray in such a way that allows you to depend on God for what you need rather than stressing out because it all depends on you. And so let's talk about how to talk to God about my needs. So in your notes, here's here's the first step to talking to God about your needs. Laying down your stress, picking up his peace. Here it is. Thank God that he knows and cares about my needs. Thank God that he knows and cares about my needs. Now, this may sound like a strange way to start to you. 
Because when you have a need that's not being met, you're probably not thinking, hey, the first thing I need to do is thank God because I have this need that is not met. Now, the first thing that we like to do is to complain to God. You know, so you pray to God and say, God, I have this problem. I have this need that's not being met. God, where are you? Because you want him to do something about it right now. But here's the thing. God already knows your needs. He loves you. He already knows what you're going through. And when you pray about a need, understand, you're not telling God something that he's not already aware of. He knows and he cares. So the first thing to pray when you have a need is this. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for already knowing my deepest needs. Now, why is this prayer important? Well, because it's a prayer of faith in who God is. It's your acknowledgement that God cares and that he is your provider. In, in uh, our next passage in Matthew chapter 6, um, in Matthew chapter 6, beginning in verse uh, 31, in fact, this, uh, this is a verse we looked at last week, a passage we looked at last week. It comes right after the Lord's Prayer. I want you to look at what uh, Jesus says here. He says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. I want you to notice what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying, look, whenever you let anxiety take over, do you know what you're acting like? You're acting like an unbeliever. You're acting like an atheist. But God knows your needs, so you don't have to worry about them. Instead, look at what he says, continuing on. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Look, don't miss this. When you put God first, when, when you pray the prayer of priority that we talked about last week, God is going to give you everything that you need so you don't have to live a life full of worry. And that's why when you talk to God about your needs, before you even tell God what you need, you can simply pray, God, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you already know all of my needs. I trust you that you are my heavenly Father and that you're going to provide for me. Now, here's a practical way to remind you to pray this prayer every day. It's a, it's a built-in reminder into your life, and it's simply this. Pray before your meals. Pray before you eat. Whether you're alone, whether you're with your family, you're at work, or you're at school, before you take a bite, bow your head and give thanks to God. Thank God for the food that you have, and thank God for always knowing your needs and always meeting them. That simple daily habit will help you build an attitude of gratitude even when you're facing a major need in your life or even when you're facing a major trial. In fact, that's exactly what Jesus did before the Last Supper that he had with his disciples. It was his last meal with his disciples the day before he was going to be crucified on the cross, before he would be arrested and beaten and crucified. He was facing a major trial. Yet Jesus started that prayer by doing what? Giving thanks. In Luke twenty two nineteen, 19, we see this. It says, Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples. You see, Jesus knew that he was about to face the agony of the cross. Yet he prayed and gave thanks anyway. Rather than allowing anxiety and stress to take over and drive him to despair, he knew that his father loved him and would provide for him. He knew that God was in control. Listen, God loves you, and he knows what you're facing. He knows your physical and your emotional needs. But let me tell you this. God also knows your spiritual needs. He knows that you need a Savior. In fact, in a few weeks, we're going to celebrate uh, Easter, the resurrection. But just three days before Easter on Good Friday, Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. He gave his body, he shed his blood, so that your sins and my sins could be forgiven. No matter what you're facing right now, pause and thank God for meeting all of your needs, especially our need for salvation. Today we're learning from the Lord's Prayer how to talk to God about our needs. And first of all, we said, you know, thank God that he knows and he cares about my needs. Here's the second step to praying to God about our needs. Number two, talk to God honestly about my needs. Write that in. Talk to God honestly about my needs. Now, because God loves you and because he already knows your needs, we just established that, 
you don't have to hold back. You can talk to God honestly about what's going on, about your needs. In fact, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray this. Here's, here's the section of the Lord's Prayer we're focusing on today. Matthew 6, 11. Jesus says, give us this day our what? Daily bread. I want, if you're taking notes, I want you to circle that word daily. Now, this is interesting because this is the only time, that word daily, it's the, the only time this specific Greek word appears in the Bible. It's the only time that it's used in the Bible. But what it refers to is food for that specific day. It was as if it was being used for a shopping list of perishable goods for that day. So it's like going to the grocery store and you're buying ripe bananas or you're buying a fish that was just caught. It's a, it's a shopping list, but it's, it's not for the future, next week, next month. It's for that day. And so when Jesus teaches us to pray, give us today our daily bread, he's saying, pray for your needs today, your daily needs. God, give me my daily rations. Meet my needs today. I'm not asking for next week, next month, or next year, but one day at a time. God, here's what I need today. And so let me be clear. It's not selfish to go to God with your list of needs. God wants you to come to him with all of your needs, every day, every hour, every, every minute if necessary. God isn't bothered by your request. Now, what I've, what I've discovered is that we're pretty good about coming to God with our needs when we're afraid. Uh, we're good at coming to God with our needs when we feel overwhelmed and life is out of control. We've been trying to handle it all in our own power. But when we get overwhelmed, then we'll come to God. For the big things in life, we'll do that. Even people who hardly pray, they'll pray when, when there's something big that they need, when they're scared. But sometimes when it's something small, we, we think, you know what, I, I'll just take care of this myself. This, this request is really too small to bother God with. He, he doesn't have time for my little request. But here's what I want you to see. God cares about all your needs, the big and the small. And the truth is, every need you have is small when compared to God. There's nothing he can't do. And there's no need that he doesn't want you to bring to him. So be honest with God about what you need. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote this about how we should do this, how we should bring uh, God our needs. And we, we see this in uh, Philippians 4, 6. That, let's read this out loud together, beginning with don't worry. Wherever you're joining us for Church Online, read this with me. Are you ready? Go. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. In other words, Paul says, don't worry, pray. Tell God what you need. He can handle it. And so sometimes we don't pray because we think our prayers are too insignificant. But sometimes, to be honest, sometimes we don't pray because we don't know what to say. You know, we think we need to use fancy language to impress God. Or we think we need to know some kind of magic words. If we get them in the right order, God will answer. If I just say it this way, if I just say it ten times in a row and I don't mess it up, then, then God is going to hear my prayer. But I want you to look at what Jesus himself says right after he teaches the Lord's Prayer. Look at what he says about honest, heartfelt prayers. In fact, this is right before the Lord's Prayer. Here's what he says. He says, when you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. And there Jesus says it again. He says, your Father already knows what you need even before you ask. So don't try to impress God. You can't. And don't try to conjure up any magical words because there aren't any. Instead, just simply, humbly, from your heart, tell God what you need. Remember, the power isn't in the words you pray, but it's in the one you're praying to. So talk to God honestly about what you need. And as you do, here's the next step to talking to God about your needs. Write this in. Track how God meets my needs one by one. Track how God meets my needs one by one. Now, this is a simple habit of keeping a prayer list or keeping a prayer journal so that you keep track of your prayers. You keep track of, of what you pray to God and you keep track of the prayers that God answers and how he meets those needs. Now, why do you need to track your prayers uh, to God? Well, there are two big reasons. First, you don't want to forget what you're praying for. 
Have you ever started to pray and you started to pray and you knew there was something important or someone important that, that you needed to pray for and you couldn't remember and it slipped your mind and you wanted to pray but you can't remember? Well, a prayer list or a prayer journal helps you keep track of your ongoing prayer requests so you can look at them and say, oh yeah, I need to pray for that. Now, these could be prayers that, that include your personal needs. It could be prayer requests for your growth group. It could be, you could be praying for the needs of others. But the idea is you have a journal or a piece of paper or a, a, a something on your computer that lists your prayer requests so that you won't forget to pray for them. But not only that, a prayer journal is a great way to keep track of how God is answering all your prayers. Because let me tell you, a lot of times what happens when we pray is this. You have a real need. You're anxious about it. I mean, it's something that keeps you up all night. And you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how you're going to pay that bill. You don't know how you're going to meet that deadline. You're feeling the anxiety. You don't know how you're going to pass the class that you're failing. You don't know how you're going to get over the heartache that you're experiencing. It's a real need you have. And so you go to God and you pray about that need. And then God steps in and he meets that need in some way. And that's amazing. But here's the thing. If you don't track how God met that need, if you don't write it down and say, oh man, I've been praying for this and here's how God answered it, you know what's going to happen? Soon you're going to forget about it. Now here comes another big need into your life, another prayer emergency, and you're stressed out again, and you're praying out of desperation again because you forgot how God has already come through for you in the past. And now you're freaking out. But listen, if you would write down how God answered your last prayer, then when the next one comes, you're going to remember. You're going you're to remember how God came through for you then, and so you're going to have more faith and less fear. You're going to have more faith that He's going to come through for you now. And you'll begin to pray with anticipation rather than out of desperation. You'll have peace instead of stress. In fact, that's how David prayed in Psalm 103 too. He prayed this way. He said, let, let all that I am praise the Lord. Get this. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Listen, may we never forget the good things that God has done for us. Keep it simple. Keep it short. But keep track of how God answers your prayers. And then watch how God is going to meet your needs and increase your faith. And so to pray the prayer of provision and talk to God about your needs... Thank God for already knowing your needs and for caring about your needs. Talk to God honestly about your needs. Track how God meets your needs. But what happens if God doesn't meet your need the way that you'd hoped, the way that you expected? Well, that leads to our, the final part of our prayer of provision, and it's this. Write this in. Trust God's plan to meet my needs. Trust God's plan to meet my needs. You know, sometimes you'll pray for something and God doesn't answer your prayer the way that you'd hoped. And you think, well, God's not listening. Prayer doesn't work. God doesn't care. Why, why doesn't God do something about this? And you might begin to think, well, pr prayer just doesn't matter. It doesn't change things. Because I'm praying, and, and as I pray, God is not meeting my needs. Have you ever been there before? But in Philippians 4.19, the Apostle Paul writes these words. Look at what he says. He says, and the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Underline that phrase, all your needs. Look up here for a moment. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, the Bible says that God's Holy Spirit comes and dwells within you, comes and lives in you. So that if you're a follower of Jesus, whenever you pray, you pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. You know what that means? It means that every time you pray, God not only hears you, but he always answers your prayers. That is a promise. Remember, God loves you. And he knows what you need more than you even know what you, you need. And sometimes, because sometimes what you think is best for you is really not what's best for you. Sometimes you're focused on an immediate need. You know, God, I need this bill to be paid right now. I need this new apartment right now. God, I'm stressed out about it right now. But God is not focused on the immediate need. He's focused on an eternal need. He's saying, are you going to trust me? Are you going to grow your faith? Are you going to expand your faith and trust that I'm going to take care of you, that I'm not going to let your head go under the water? 
Are you going to trust me in a way that grows your faith and expands your love and, and, and your, your, your spiritual life? You know, sometimes we're so focused on the small thing in front of us that we miss the bigger thing that God is doing in us and around us. And that's why this journey is called faith. Because God is always teaching us to trust Him more, to trust His timing and His ways. Even when we would rather it happen in our time and in our way. Let's go back to the Lord's Prayer for, for a moment. Remember our phrase? Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. This simple prayer is God's antidote to stress, anxiety, worry, and fear. Why? Because it's a prayer of trust and dependence. If you depend on others, they're likely to let you down. If you depend on the customer representative behind the counter at the airport, they'll probably let you down. If you depend on yourself, well, you're going to stress out, you're going to have anxiety and fear and worry, and you're going to find that you're not strong enough. The challenge of the Lord's Prayer is to learn through prayer to completely depend on God for every need in your life, every day. God, I recognize that you are the provider of my needs. And I'm here to declare my dependence on you because you're a loving father. And I trust that you're going to meet all of my needs today. You can depend on God and his plan for you, no matter what you're facing. Because God proved, he proved to us that he loves us and he, he meets our needs. He proved that when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. God demonstrated that he is trustworthy. Our final verse shows us that this in Romans 8, 32. I want you to read this final verse out loud with me. Those of you in New York, South Florida, wherever you're joining us from, read this with me. Are you ready? Go. Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Since God gave up his one and only son for your salvation, don't you think he's also going to give you everything else that you need? If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior and your Lord, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. In fact, I want to lead all of us in a prayer right now to, to, to help us instead of living independently to begin to depend on God to meet all of our needs. Would you bow your heads with me right now and let's go to God in prayer. Wherever you're joining us for Church Online, bow your head with me right now and let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that you know and care about our needs. God, thank you that we can come to you every day, every hour, every moment with all our needs. And that, God, you hear us and you answer, even if it's not exactly the way we might expect. God, thank you for knowing our needs even before we ask and for being faithful to provide for all of our needs when we come to you. Thank you especially for providing for our greatest need, our need for a Savior. God, in these final weeks leading up to Easter, we turn our hearts to you and to the cross and on to Jesus' sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. And as we pray, for those of you who may have never put your faith in Jesus to forgive your sins, you've never trusted God to give you a fresh start and a home in heaven, you can make Jesus the Savior and Lord of your life right now as we pray. In fact, I'm going to ask you to pray this simple prayer silently in your heart as I pray it out loud. If you're ready to step across the line and get right with God, pray this with me. Jesus, today I turn to you. I know I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I invite you to come into my life and forgive me. God, I don't want to live apart from you anymore. I want to follow you as the leader and Lord of my life from this day forward as a part of your church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.